Hey, welcome to Weld.com, home of TIG time. Hi, I'm Mr. TIG, and today we're going to talk about water cool systems. Now, in TIG welding, a lot of the demonstrations that we've given you have been in air cooled, and it's primarily because we're welding below 200 amps. In fact, we're welding at about 150 amps or less. So whenever you have those conditions, then it's okay. Go ahead and air cool. It's cheaper to set up your system. But every once in a while, we come across a machine that we like. And uh, in this particular case, uh, we came across a PowerTig 250EX. Now, a 250 amp machine means that you're going to start getting serious about TIG welding. And if you do, I want you to know I'd like for you to immediately go to a water cool system. Now, the only time that you want to go air-cooled with a system with 250 amps is that you're just budgeting and you, uh, you bought the machine, the bare-bones machine, and, and you're building your system up. So other than that, and, and of course that's going to be offered, but other than that, you want to go water-cooled. Now, this particular machine we've been testing for some time now, and uh, we found it to be something that, that we want to make a Mr. Tig series machine. So what does that mean? Well, we take a machine and we find its weaknesses. Uh, now, it already has all of its pluses and we've tested it, it runs good. Uh, I can go through the specs of the machine, but we find that the machine may have something uh, as silly as it sounds. Uh, you take a look at the power cable. It, it comes with four wires sticking out like this. We don't like for you to have to plug this in. We don't want you to do any pre-wiring. What we want to do is we want to take a plug and we're going to put it on. And so when you buy this machine, this will already be installed. Now, the reason that this is typically in this condition is because this is a single phase and a three phase machine. So I can tell you that industry will probably go three phase, but this, this machine probably 80% of the time is going to end up in your shop and you're going to want a 50 amp plug on it. So we're going to go ahead and put that on and you're good to go. Now, secondly, in almost every case, in fact, every case, most of the import machines that we have found, the TIG torches are just absolutely horrible. And I mean, not just bad, but horrible. So we will put on a top notch TIG torch, and this happens to be a 300 amp CK flex head. So this is going to go on there, and a couple of things that you need to be aware of is that we have a water cooler on here, and I'm going to show how to install it here in a minute, but if you notice, this has threads. In the old style water coolers, you used to have to screw this on. Now, every time you want to change torches, you had to unscrew it, and you lost about three quarts of water on the floor. What we're doing now is everything is a quick disconnect. So we're going to put these and we're going to pre-install them. You don't have to do that. And this is a quick disconnect and it's just kind of like an air fitting except it's a water fitting. It plugs into the front of this water cooler and you can unplug it and you don't lose water out of your water cooler. Now you still got to be concerned to make sure you get this uh, up above where the water level because you still have water inside the cables of the torch. So just know that these are going to be pre-installed. Everything is quick change. This is a dense connector and we're going to pop it on there. We'll demonstrate it here in just a few minutes. So this is the key to successful welding, having a good water cool torch with a nice flexible head. So that's going to come as a standard. Now I, I have here, this is the argon line and we've now gone to solid fittings. So you don't have to slip on and tighten these little uh, worm clamps. So that comes with it. And it's amazing, these little things that we do make it so much better. You're going, to get, you're going to get a gas lens kit. And the difference between a water cool system and an air cool system, this one's going to give you all the way up to 1 8 inch tungsten. That's going to give you the 040, the 1 16th, the 332, but also the 1 8 because you're going to be welding at some uh, high amperages and you want tungsten that'll handle it. Now, I always like to put these up as a comparison because this is a standard foot control and this is what comes with the machine normally. And we've tested it. And you're probably wondering if I'm going to slide it off the end of the bench. And the answer is no, because it's not, it's not terribly bad. It's a decent foot control for a beginner. Okay, so if you start using this, and the way to tell is you start putting pressure and it, you can feel little lunges. As you get better and better as a welder, 
you're going to notice the difference between this and a professional foot pedal. And you can tell by the difference. You can tell by how it's made. There is a cost associated to it. So just know that we don't want an average foot control on a machine of this cost. So we're going to put the top-notch SSC control on there. And all you have to do is make this motion, feel it. You'll know the difference. You'll see the difference when you start ramping up your amperage or down. So uh, just know that this is not going to come with your system. So we'll, we'll put this aside. And you may see this foot control on some of our smaller machines, lower cost machines. But uh, anyway, this is the, the coup de grace. And you're going to get the Mr. Tig uh, regulator, argon regulator, and the ground clamp. But this whole system is going to be ready to go when you get it, pre-wired, pre-set up, easy to plug in. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around and I'm going to start showing you some of the functions on this machine. But before I do, I just want to let you know that this machine is a 250 amp machine, AC-DC. It lights off at 5 amps on both AC-DC. Now the plus or minus tolerance on that is 2 amps. Now if you really want to get low on amperage on this and get the, the true 5 amps, you got to drop down to the 40 thousandths diameter tungsten. So if you're doing foil type work, use the 40 thousandths diameter. Uh, there's some pulsing on here. If you want to use a pulsing feature, the pulsing feature goes up to 500 hertz. Now there's another feature on here that if you want to squeeze down your arc for welding aluminum, you can. And it's a hertz setting. And this thing goes up to 250 hertz. So the higher the number on the hertz, the tighter the arc gets. Uh, so just want you to know it's an easy to use machine. It's analog. We decided to go analog on this instead of digital. It's easier to teach. It's easier to look at. It's easier to set up. So I'm going to come around and set it up for you. Okay, the first thing that I'm going to hook up is the argon line. It's on the very back here, and you can thumb tighten it and then use a, a, a wrench, just a, a snug tight. The next thing I do is I actually put the argon regulator on and I tighten it as well. And then I finish the last one. This is the hose. And so now I've got a complete argon system, all tightened with fittings. The next thing I do is I just take the ground. Now this is uh, one of those things where you have a 50% chance of hooking it up incorrectly. So take a look at it. And this is going to be the plug that you plug in for your TIG torch. So this is for your ground. If you accidentally get it in the wrong hole, when you start to weld, you're going to see your tungsten disappear up into your cup. You just got the polarity reverse, so switch your leads back. So uh, got a nice ground on it. Next thing I'm going to do is uh, take the torch. Everything has got a quick disconnect on it. And I'm just going to wrap it in the beginning. I'm just going to wrap it right here just so I can manage it. And if you'll notice, it's like spaghetti. Now one of the things that we're going to put on here, and I'm just telling you this live because there's a nice little sheath or a cover that holds everything in place. It manages the cable, it's leather, and it's Velcro. So when you get it, you just roll it over, the Velcro snaps together, and uh, anyway, it's a, it's a very good looking system once you get it all put together. Okay, what I'm gonna do is, uh, this is the portion that goes into your machine, and it's a dense connector, and it's already pre-assembled for you. This is your gas line. It's a quick disconnect. Okay, so now with everything is hooked up here except your foot control. So I'm just gonna drop the lines for the time being, and here's my foot control. Okay, everything's in place. Now, you'll, you'll probably notice down here in the water cooler, we've already put the liquid in. We put the two gallons of distilled water, isopropyl alcohol. We put about 32 ounces, so it's going to stay clean. It's uh, kind of an antifungus, plus uh, it's going to retard it from uh, freezing. 
Okay, now the, the only thing left is uh, hooking up the cables. These are water cables. You can tell by the little notches right here. We've got them color-coded. So let's go with the blue down here. You know, let's go with the red up here. And uh, we're basically good to go. So uh, make sure that this is on. We have plugged this into the back of the machine. So when this machine comes on, this comes on. Yeah, you won't burn up the power cable that way. Okay, that pretty much describes the assembly of this system. Uh, and just know that this system coming to you is uh, three packages. So we, we call this our bundle. So everything I described here is part of our bundle. And it's always better to buy it in a bundle and make sure you get it right and you get cheaper cost out of it. So pretty good system, uh, great value. So um, take a look at it. And thanks for watching TIG Time. I'm Mr. TIG.